Hydro Club USA. My name is Joseph Arbuckle. Today I'm going to be going over a few things with you including an installation, how to work with your HHO system, lots of the answers for your frequently asked questions uh, that you may have on our HHO systems, the installation itself, as well as how to tune your HHO system to get the best results. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is introduce you to the vehicle we'll be doing our installation on. It's a 1996 Honda Accord. It's got the 2.2 VTEC engine in it. This is a used vehicle I've purchased recently. It's got 156,000 miles on it. It doesn't currently have any mechanical problems. It's in sound running condition, uh, which is important on a vehicle if you're going to start an HHO installation. Even though I've heard many reports and we've seen it on some of our own vehicles that HHO in itself will cure a lot of ailments, uh, like a rough idle. Uh, the first thing you want to do uh, when you're going to be approaching a vehicle uh, for an HHO installation is know what your baseline miles per gallon is. So many times, you believe it or not, I'll speak to folks on the phone and uh, they spent you know hundreds of dollars on this system but yet they don't know what they're getting in their miles per gallon to begin with. They just know they're not getting good gas mileage. So importantly get your baseline. Um, you can do that by you know, an old method, if, you're, if you've got a vehicle like mine, I don't have any way of basically gauging what kind of miles per gallon I'm getting. So I fill it up all the way to the top with the same spot every time, take a drive, fill it back up to that same spot, and I will divide the amount of miles by the amount of ga gallons. Okay, that'll give you a number. Um, that's you can be as accurate as you can with that so do it several times okay know what you're getting in the city mixed in the highway um, this vehicle I went on fueleconomy.gov and basically this is a um, it's a report of you know lots of users with this vehicle and what they're getting with their vehicles um, on average users were getting around 28 miles to the gallon and that's a highway figure okay um, in the city is somewhere around between 20 and 23 so this even got reports ranging from 22 miles to gallon to 34 what's important is what I'm getting on my vehicle okay that's just to show you kind of a baseline so here's my gas receipts I took several trips highway city um, the numbers are in I'm getting on average between 26 and 27 miles to the gallon in the city and that also stayed fairly true with my mixed mileage as well okay um, on the highway I was getting somewhere around 30 to 31 miles to the gallon um, I'm a pretty conservative driver I don't really get on it a lot even though every once in a while you know I do because I like to kind of blow up the engine a little bit <clears throat> I did install a Volo chip which is the Volo FS2 chip if you're wondering about that this is the electronics for fuel injected vehicles years 1996 to 2013 it's one of the most important parts of the system for fuel injected installation um, I can talk to you a little bit more about that in other videos but the main thing it does is it manages your ECU and your oxygen sensors so that we can add our HHO conversion system with no problems from the vehicles ECU or the oxygen sensors sending more fuel which is a very common ailment in the HHO community. We've been able to overcome that with the help of the FS2 chip. Uh, get your baseline miles per gallon. The next thing you're going to want to do is take a comparison with the Volo FS2 chip installed. Um, and the, what you're looking for here is a little bit of a change in your vehicle's driving behavior. Um, and the main thing I usually see almost every time if it's working correctly is I'll see a slight difference in my miles per gallon between one and three miles per gallon with the Volo compared to without the Volo. So let's just go over these things real quick. First thing you want to do is take a baseline, know what kind of miles per gallon you're getting to, with your vehicle before you install an HHO system. Number two, if you have a fuel injected vehicle that's newer that you're going to need an FS2 chip on it go ahead and take a nap a comparison go ahead and take a comparison test so you can compare with the Volo without the Volo and then the next, last thing you're going to do is engage your HHO system and we'll go over that after we've done the installation on this 1996 Honda Accord. Alright so one of the first things you're going to want to do is go ahead and pop open the hood 
we'll take a look underneath the engine compartment. Let's see what kind of space we've got available for our HHO units. Now don't fret if you've got very little space. This is something we work with on a day-to-day -day basis. There's usually a way to get around it and we can make sure to get your system installed. Alright, so some of the most common areas that we find uh, to, that have enough room for your installation are going to be toward the firewall, in the wheel wells, and then between the radiator and the front bumper. What you're typically looking for if you're going to be able to get the best configuration is a nice drop where your lines can be straight down from your tank down to your cell of about 12 to 14 inches. Um, and like I said, you don't want those lines snaking. That's optimal. We do understand that's very hard to get because of the space restrictions underneath your vehicle's engine compartment. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a look down here in the engine compartment. Let's take a look at some of the main areas that you'll be looking at. I can go ahead and see, uh, and you can't see it yet, but I'm gonna take this away. I believe there's a space down here where you can mount your cell, have a bracket, and then my one quart, the smaller water reservoir, will sit right here. That's where I believe this is gonna fit. Now some other better areas would be in the wheel well areas and back in the firewall, which obviously in this vehicle is not going to be one. You want to keep it as far away from the engine heat as possible to protect your HHO system. When we come back, we'll be showing you just exactly where we decided to mount our cell and our tank. access to the area between the radiator and the bumper. And if you look down in there, you'll see probably got enough room for one quart tank and a decent drop down into the where the cells will be mounted. And uh, you might have to make some customizations, but there aren't anything that's going to be really time consuming. Um, you can do a good job and not really spend a ton of time on it. All right, back on our install of our 1996 Honda Accord. 2.2 VTEC. Uh, the main components of your system, if you hadn't already figured out by now, is going to be your water reservoir, which holds your electrolyte and distilled water mixture, and your 9 plate HHO dry cell. You can call this a generator, you can call this a cell, but this is the main component which the water flows down into and comes out, turning it from a liquid into a gas. That's the HHO we're using. So, the first thing we've done is we've made a space to where I can eventually hang my cell either within here or just below it um, but the main thing we're going to do first is uh, we've made this area here to where we can mount our tank we've got this uh, this is just some scrap metal line around it's flexible but it's very sturdy uh, if you get this in there it's not going to go anyway so I'm gonna it's not going to go anywhere <clears throat> basically we're going to mount a piece here and a piece hanging here so this will hold our main reservoir we've already checked to see that this piece can come back on the front when this is all done which is a good thing to do we'll come back when we've got our tank mounted sometimes you'll have to use methods that are a little more unorthodox but the main key points are you get your tank mounted in a position where it's going to fit well your make sure you have clearance for your hose make sure um, that it's mounted securely um, which we've went ahead and done that with our two metal brackets here. Once you've got your tank mounted, you can go ahead and start working on your cell positioning. So we've went ahead and mounted our reservoir. Um, one of the main things you would have done prior to actually securing this down is you would have made sure that you have a nice 12 inch drop from the bottom of the tank to where your cell is going to be mounted. Uh, that's for a single cell kit. Dual cell kits, typically you would like to try to have 14 to 16, but that's a tough figure to hit. Um, get as close to 12 as you can. If you're going to be substantially less, if you're going to be in the range of 8 or 9, go ahead and give me a call or check out the link below on pumps. Um, that way you can make sure that your system stays circulating. It's very important. So we're just going to go ahead and check um, from the bottom to where we're going to be mounting, which is right about here. It's right at 12 inches, okay? So we know we did a good job mounting our tank. We can carry on with a mounting our cell. Right. And we're back. All right, so went ahead, used some screws and some washers, mounted our water reservoir onto the brackets, which I was telling you about. The next thing 
I want to talk about real quick is when you're finding a place to mount your cell just look around your shop you'll be very surprised if you got a piece of metal or um, this or that just things laying around I found um, I mean this is just a piece of metal it, it's what holds our big sheets of acrylic on the pallet when it comes in very sturdy stable I've used it drilled some holes in it and actually fastened a mounting bracket for my cell so the second part after you got your tank mounted is you want to go ahead and get your cell mounted so if you see I fastened the bracket onto my frame this is very secure and you mount your cell to your bracket the last thing you'll do is you'll run your hoses don't forget your hose clamps any place where you got plumbing water connections you want to use your hose clamps okay the barb that goes sh straight out of the reservoir is going to connect to your lower inlet that's the in the barb that comes out and goes on an L will connect to the higher inlet that's your out so it'll circulate from the middle into the cell out and back up that's the plumbing part next comes the wiring all right and we've got our tank and our cell mounted to be honest with you that's probably the most difficult part of the installation if you're a little scared about wiring I'll be honest with you this is probably the easiest part of the whole system when you're doing wiring just follow your wiring diagram if you have any doubts or questions give me a call shoot us an email I'll be glad to help you uh, the main thing I can tell you right now with your wiring is best ground is always going to be to the negative of the battery and secondly anytime you're making connections make sure they're good strong tight connections if you keep those two things in mind you'll have a successful installation so what we're going to do is we're going to start from our battery's positive connection coming off of there is going to be your fuse holder okay that's going to hold your 30 amp resettable fuse circuit breaker whichever you prefer to call it off of the positive post of your battery is going to be the fuse holder that's going to come and the first connection point it's going to make is going to be with your relay okay on your relay if you look at the diagram that's going to be pin 30 so you connect this and you'll mount it somewhere where it's nice and out of the way makes the system look professionally done so once you've made the connection with your relay you've got your relay mounted I'll go from there and continue on with the other connections alright and we're back uh, we went ahead and went into day two only reason we was running out of light in the warehouse and a couple other things to do so we just come back today and finished up the rest um, it was simple wiring so I'm gonna go over the basic wiring and also show you the functionality of the system in my car uh, go a little bit into detail on the type of tests I'm gonna start with on this vehicle so uh, we got our cell and our tank mounted our plumbing mounted um, there's a couple other additional things uh, that I need to show you on the wiring but it's all real basic and you can you know basically follow along on your wiring diagram uh, if you look here I've got my amp meter display I've got my PWM here I've wired everything from the engine compartment and I've got everything tucked away already but basically um, I've got a main power wire coming from the cell uh, and going back out toward the battery as well as a ground coming from the cell and going back out toward the battery so there's four wires those are the 10 gauge wires my amp meter is connected to my shunt according to the wiring diagram the shunts located just behind here behind my stereo and whatnot I'll real quick I'll show you um, the back of the PWM here let me pull this out a little bit but if, as you can see like I said I've got uh, ground coming from the battery uh, I mean ground coming from the cell power coming from the cell power going out and then ground going back out really easy um, I had to kind of modify these terminal connections a little bit just to get them to fit in these holes by basically uh, clipping a little bit of excess off of them but once you get them in there this thing's ready to go so I'm going to close this back up real quick so I got this PWM makes the system nice and the main reason is uh, I've got control over the power to the cell so the cell is not going to produce unless I turn my PWM on and off um, I also if you look down here uh, I'll go ahead and turn the system on uh, usually want to have the car started when you're doing this you go do that always want to have the car running uh, you always want to have your engine running when you're producing hydrogen but I can turn my 
as you can see, zero, I can turn it on, off, and on with the PWM, okay? Uh, I can control my amp draw with the turn of a knob instead of the traditional way, which is fine, uh, which is making mixtures of electrolytes, say a quarter of a teaspoon to a quarter of distilled water, giving you a low amp draw. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this vehicle out on 150, 150 mile test trips, okay? The first trip I'll take will be at around 3 amps. 150 miles, I'll test my miles per gallon, log all my data, make sure you're tracking everything, um, and then what I'll do is I'll come back out here and I'll kick my PWM up. I'll go ahead and raise the amps, uh, say to 4 or 5 amps, okay? Now, I've only got enough KOH in my reservoir that when I turn this thing all the way up, I can only get about 4 amps. So the maximum that your PWM will get is determined by how strong your mixture is. I throw another teaspoon of KOH in there, my range will be increased dramatically. I'll be able to go upwards from 0 all the way to 10. Um, start my first test off, 3 amps, drive it for 150 miles. I'll come back and I'll let you know what kind of results we got and also track this on our Facebook. You can follow along with us at facebook.com slash hhojo. Uh, I'll go over some more of the wiring on the next segment. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so uh, I know you would have loved to uh, follow us completely through the wiring. Uh, we do have an installation video which we'll be bringing out here very shortly. Uh, just got to put that together. Um, we also have the wiring diagrams. You can follow this directly. The wiring is real simple. The diagrams are real straightforward. So I'm just going to kind of go over it real briefly with you on this. All right, so it comes off of the battery. This is your main 10 gauge wire. This is your power wire. I've got a 30 amp fuse that's resettable. It's going to go into our relay. It's going to go out to the PWM, come back, and the other end of that connects to the power on the cell, which if you remember, that's mounted down here in the front bumper. I also have a negative going from the cell, going into my cab, goes through the shunt, connects to the PWM, comes out of the shunt, and comes directly to the negative of the battery. Uh, you can view the wiring diagram. Uh, I can post a link attached to this. It's also on our Facebook. Um, but like I said, it's very simple. The other connection is the ground on the relay, and the only other one is your 18 gauge wire, which is what powers. This is what's on and off. This is what kicks your relay on and off. You can actually watch the relay kick on and off because of the clear relay. Really cool. Uh, you don't usually see that in relays. Um, we typically will tell you to to install this to where it turns on and off only when the engine's running, okay? And the way you do that is you'll find your fuel pump relay. It'll have four pins, just like our clear relay, which comes with the kit. And you'll connect the power connection on your relay with the power connection on your fuel pump relay. Um, in this particular case, uh, on this 96 Honda Accord, when I located the fuel pump relay, which was very difficult, um, most of the time your fuel pump relay is really easy to find. It's usually going to be in a fuse panel like this, it'll be like a relay like this, really easily to access uh, or somewhere else in the engine compartment. In this particular car, the manufacturers decided to hide it tucked way underneath the accelerator, underneath your steering column. When I found it and pulled it out, because I wanted to hook it up to where it turned on and off with the engine, um, it wasn't a conventional one. It wasn't a traditional you know, four pin relay. So I had to decide how am I going to get this system hooked up where it's the safest environment, where I can almost be positive that it's not left running when the vehicle's engine's not running. I don't want to be listening to the radio and have my hydrogen running. So the great thing is I powered um, this system uh, this might sound a little funny, but you're going to find yourself making adjustments, making modifications. Um, just the main thing you want to keep in mind is safety and, and the best environment for the cell. I've actually got this thing hooked up, powering my relay on and off when my lights are on. I know that sounds kind of odd, but you know most vehicles have running lights anyway. I turn my lights on, uh, it gives power to the system. Uh, as a secondary, which this is wonderful, I'm controlling my system with a PWM. So there's actually, I can have my lights on and the system won't engage until I click my PWM on and engage it, which is wonderful because I know for a fact when I start it up, I'm ready to drive, I'll click my PWM on and I'll be able to, you know, go start driving. So uh, it's not such a conventional, it's not really the way we recommend installing it. 
uh, which is kind of funny. I always find it funny when people make videos, you know, from the manufacturer and they tell you don't do this and then they tell you how they did it differently. But hey, sometimes you got to make modifications. Uh, the main, the most important thing is that you keep in your mind that you know what's going on. I only want HHO running when the engine's running. That's our installation at our 1996 Honda Accord. I'll be posting results. I really think this thing is going to do very well. I'm very excited to, um, to see how it's going to do. Um, thank you so much for tuning in.